Episode 52, Eight Things to Remember When Going Through Tough Times. You're listening to the very best podcast in the world on health, wealth, and happiness. Please remember to leave a review and share with all your friends and family. And here is your host, Lars Hilser. Hello, friends. Welcome to the very best podcast in the world, Personal Supremacy Through El Health Law. <laughs> Health, wealth, and happiness. Uh, there we got that straight. Um, 52nd episode, uh, and I am psyched somehow uh, because the feedback's been great. Producing this show has been, I don't know, marvelous uh, in multiple ways because most of all, and in a very egoistical, egoistic sense, uh, I get thrown back into... Uh, a lot of experiences that I've had on the journey of life and yeah, sharing them has been kind of interesting, uh, because, you know, it's like revisiting a situation that I, uh, that I experienced. Um, and it's, it's double rewarding in that the feedback that I'm getting is just insanely great. And so therefore, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's just, it psychs me out positively. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So, um, today the topic is eight things to remember when going through tough times, as you heard in the introduction. Now we're going to have to qualify what tough times actually are. And there is a significant amount of perception to this because while for some people uh, tough times are you know as simple as kind of not finding the correct color of nail polish sorry i bumped the microphone uh you know for some people it's uh, tough times are not finding the right color of nail polish that they want or you know get stuck or fucked when minor things go south. Uh, and for other people, it's actually like wading through knee or waist deep shit in their life. Uh, and I'm talking about things like, uh, you know, your house burned down or, you know, thereby you lost all of your, uh, uh, all of your memorable stuff, uh, all your you know, tokens and stuff that you brought from journeys for me, that would be a big catastrophe, uh, because I've collected so much stuff that just, you know, beside the podcast brings back memories to situations that I was in and that I kind of connect with that. Um, and there's a big discrepancy between those two. Yeah. Very prominent examples. Number one, of course, was like a, you know, first world problem. Number two, more like something very and objectively devastating. That doesn't mean that finding the right color of nail polish in the shop that you were looking in isn't bad. You know, it, it for some people it's just disastrous. Uh, but you know, it's not up to me or anyone to really determine um, what is really a tough time and what is not, because that's just up to personal perception and a personal threshold of how valuable or how, um, yeah, really valuable something like that is to you. Now I promised eight things that'll help you get through it. And I think we should get started because I've been randomly rambling, uh, for, you know, close to five minutes. So um, let's get started. Number one, everything can and will change. That's a fact in life. Uh, nothing's going to stay the same, um, you know, unless you want to go into that lifestyle of nine to five and, 
you know, wake up every morning, don't, you know, be compliant with everything that gets thrown at you, and so on and so forth. So life is subject to change, period. I think that's a given, and that's something you have to, yeah, get used to, adapt to, and, you know, just disregard that you, you know, that everything will stay the same. Even if you're in the nine to five conundrum, uh, it's just inevitable that you, things are going to change in that, for instance, you're going to get older, <laughs> you know, and your bones are going to start to hurt when you get up in the morning and your hair is going to turn gray, you know, unless of course, like the ladies, you color your hair and there's just tons of shit that will change and things, these tough times are just evidence for that, right? Number two, um, you've overcome challenges before. I think there isn't a person in life that hasn't been confronted with, um, you know, more or less significant challenges. And that's what you have to keep in mind. You know, it's like in number one, uh, life is just subject, subject to change. And uh, it, this change will more often than not be in form of challenges. And so therefore you have to uh, adapt to the new situations you're confronted with. And that's a good thing, you know, because you learn. And that leads us to number three, um, that, you know, the things that happen, the tough times that happen uh, are a learning experience, not a failure. It's very important to understand that, right? You can see like, for instance, you start a business, it doesn't go well, it goes bust, right? It's not a failure per se, because on the way to it going bust, you learned a tremendous amount of shit and lessons that will prevent you from starting a second company. And well, it won't prevent you from starting a second company. It shouldn't. In fact, you know, you should start a second company, but with the lessons learned, from the first one that went bust, at least those lessons are not going to make the second company go bust, right? For me, that was when I started my first company, it was like, okay, I'll start my company because I came out of the finance sector and, you know, things started to happen uh, in regards to corporate politics, which I just don't play well. So I said, you know, fuck you all. I'm going to start my first company. And I thought that I was so influential and that my product was so good that the customers would just line up, but they didn't. You know, it was like the, the products that I was offering were inherently so complex that the people didn't understand it. It was not that they wouldn't need them, but they didn't understand that they wouldn't listen. You know, five years later, different story. Uh, I went up to them, pitched the thing, and they were like, oh, right. I heard about that like four or five years ago. And I was like, yeah, thanks. You know, I was the editor and, I, and, and the writer of the shit that you heard and the publisher, but you didn't listen then, you know, and that was like a fucked up situation because my company almost went, went, went bust. Right. And so that was one of many things that I learned, you know, starting the first, comp uh, the, the first company, uh, and those things will never happen again. And that's why I'm so, you know, always raising the finger and saying, well, if you want to start a company, do it on do it as a side hustle right don't go quitting your job and say okay i've got i don't know a million in assets that i want to start a company no um you know keep your job because you don't know what's going to happen you know and starting a company isn't like well i'm going to start a company it's starting a company is like holy shit that's a bunch of work you know while in today's world theoretically you've got eight hours of work eight hours of play and eight hours of sleep those eight hours of play, they're gone, right? And so are more likely than not four of the eight hours of your sleep time. So you're going to be down to about four hours of sleep and the rest is just work and hustling. And that's really something very important to understand. Uh, this leads us to number four. Uh, not getting what you want can be a blessing. <laughs> you know, it's like a lot of people uh, just go totally apeshit if they don't get what they want. Yeah, you know, they're called usually in today's society successful and, you know, uh, energetic people, but they're just full of shit because sometimes, you know, the cards 
are played against you and you're not going to get what you want. And in a lot of cases, at least for me, that's been true uh, in this very reflective lifetime that I'm leading currently uh, is like, you know, sometimes if you don't, it's not that bad, right? Um, there's a lot of comments I've been making on all of these get rich quick scams, you know, and I'm going to drive a Ferrari in 40. No, um, you know, because, <laughs> because why, <laughs> you know, it's like, you've got your blessings, um, all figured out. You've got your life, you're healthy, uh, more likely than not, you know, and, and there's just so much, there's so much good thing, good, so many good things in your life that you don't necessarily want, you know, that stuff that you really, really want. And um, that's, you know, one of the most important things you will more often than not hear me laughing in this podcast. And that's number five, allow yourself to have fun, right? Because fun is, you know, there's, uh, I, I forget the statistics, but, you know, 10 minutes of laughter in, in hand or uh, lengthens your life by so many months. And that's pretty accurate. If you lose humor in life, you know, and you run through life with a bitter face, uh, not only are people going to notice because the smile you're going to put on to convince them is just going to be artificial. And people see through that. And you know, it's just about really being convincingly happy and laughing about stupid shit and laughing about things that go wrong. You know, it's like, I don't know, a simple example, you're doing something in the household. And the other day I dropped, uh, dropped a bag of flour on the floor. Well, yeah, you know, I, I didn't laugh about it because I knew that it was going to happen because I had my other two hands full. So it was like carrying this bag. It was like meant to happen. There was no other way around it. But, you know, what's the point in being getting pissed off? It's not going to help you. You know, it's not going to make the situation go backward and put the bag of flour back into your hand, right? So, you know, laugh about it, sweep it up, get the vacuum cleaner, get the rest done, finish. You know, and it took me, I don't know, what, 10 minutes. But it goes to prove a point that, you know, you can either frown on situations you're confronted with or you can make the best of it and just be, I don't know, happy about it, um, you know, have fun enjoy yourself. And I don't mean going out partying or whatever, but, you know, having that smile on your face when shit happens makes the shit so much, makes the shit stink so much less. You know, it's, it's just amazing. Try it out. So, um, number six, uh, being kind to yourself, uh, is the best medicine. And yeah, uh, it's pretty egoistic to mention that, especially if you're you know, in a relationship or something, and you need to make two people happy. Uh, that's a jiffy. You know, it's very hard. Um, and maintaining kindness towards yourself in a situation like that is very difficult. But, you know, in a functioning relationship, you should get kindness back from your partner. Uh, and that, in fact, should then lead to yourself being, you know, it's like this energy cycle. And it's a good thing. Tomorrow we're going to do the energy life cycle. Uh, that's something I've been working on for quite some time, trying to figure that out. So, uh, you know, treating yourself to uh, good shit, you know, treating yourself to good food, um, treating yourself to fun, treating yourself to, you know, downtime that makes you happy and that you didn't read about in a paper, but where you really know from the bottom of your heart that this would be good for you now, do it. You know, it's like, for me, I never really went into hiding when it was about uh, getting sleep because I just hate being 80 to 90% uh, effective because errors happen. And so whenever I noticed that my concentration and that my efficiency went down, I would go to bed for half an hour, wherever the fuck I was. You know, go to the, if it was on a contract, I go to the hotel, uh, you know, lay down for half an hour, come back, finish, done. And that's, you know, a very interesting concept that you should develop for yourself. You know, figure out what it is that you find to be kindness towards yourself and then just do it. 
you know, don't really pay attention to what the opinion of others is, because at the end of the day, you know, you're not there to make the others happy uh, or your surrounding, but you're there. Uh, it's your life, you know, very interesting episode, by the way, um, the your life thing. That being said, let's get to number seven after <clears throat> I've made a cough. <laughs> uh, other people's negativity isn't worth worrying about. Amen. That's number seven, by the way, if I haven't mentioned it. Uh, if you want to start something, you're going to have tons of people who, A, know it better. They're a bunch of smart asses. Um, that goes to, that, you know, doesn't go to say that you shouldn't listen to other people. That, that's just wrong. But what you, you know, you should take it with a grain of salt, what other people are saying, because they're not you and they're not your business. And as I mentioned in the other so episode, uh, I think it was yesterday, not day before you get, well, not last week. <laughs> I mentioned, you know, that, uh, you know, take advice. Yeah. But don't take it literally. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's it. You know, I think that basically sums it up. So, um, other people's negativity, uh, there's always people out there who run around with a frowny face, you know, they just, they look like they're actually, I don't know, uh, an inch before shooting themselves tonight in the head or, you know, hanging themselves or taking pills or whatever. And it's like those people are a mystery to me because normally they're, um, uh, healthy, right? And they're wealthy to a degree, but they're not happy. And I don't get the equation. You know, it's like for me, that doesn't compute, right? Um, you've got nothing to worry about, right? Uh, nothing. You know, it's like you've got a steady stream of income. Uh, you've got, you're, you're healthy, you know, you're good looking. Uh, and then you're like, well, yeah, but, and I'm like, no, not, but be fucking happy. You know, that's really what life is about is happiness. And if the other two, uh, the X and the Y kind of, you know, add or the A and the B, you know, kind of add up and multiply and why, what's, what's there, you know, for me, it doesn't compute, but for them, it de facto doesn't compute, right? Because if you're healthy and you know, I'm not talking about wealthy, like being rich, right? I'm talking about steady stream of income, roof over your head, and you know, the essentials, right? In Maslow's pyramid, the essentials, you've got a roof over your head, you've got food on the table, you're healthy. What in the fuck are you doing not being happy? You know, and for me, it's like running through the world smiling is I, I have nothing to worry about. And that's really something that a lot of you share with me. And I know that for a fact. So be fucking happy about it. And if you're not happy, don't go pissing other people off, you know, piss yourself off that you're unhappy in your job or something, and you're not willing to change it because you're in the comfort zone, you know, and if you're not comfortable, stop pissing other people off with it. Right. And that leads us to last, but not least number eight. And this is the very important one. Last, but not least, well, last, I should have been first, but anyhow, um, there's always, always, always something to be grateful for. And that kind of lines up with uh, what I just mentioned. You know, more likely than not, you're healthy. And if you were born with, you know, a disability or something, <laughs> fucking live with it. You know, you don't hear me complaining, you know, that I have, that I'm cross-eyed to a degree and can't see, uh, have no depth perception, or that I have... Uh, for the better part of my life, had severe neurodermatitis, you know, fucking live with it, right? Get over it. And I stuttered. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> it was like the, being a kid with those three handicaps, boy, that was fun. Um, but it gave you a lot of challenges to overcome, which, you know, it's like um, tough times and <laughs> getting through them. Um, I don't know, perhaps it is that, that you need to be born uh, with a few handicaps just to kind of settle you into reality, right? And give you perspective on a lot of things. But, you know, whatever it is at the end of the day, uh, I hope that, uh, yeah, this was helpful to you. And I hope that you can resonate on some of the stuff and that you find yourself in it 
or in some of it, and that you can make use of it. And the next, you know, the next time that you go through shit uh, or tough times, you know, just uh, remember this episode, you know, whatever it is, just for, <laughs> I don't care, write it down, you know, and um, make yourself notes. And the next time you run into something, pull out that piece of paper and go, oh, okay, yeah. There's perspective, there's how to solve it, you know, and I think then you will be good. In that sense, I am wishing you a successful day. Yeah, as always. And a good night after the successful day. If you've already had your successful day, like if you're in, uh, I don't know, Japan or something, um, you know, have a good night and sleep well, keep your hands above the blanket. If you want to wake up more happy tomorrow, I can only recommend episode, I have forgotten the number, where it says positive wake up call. Look that up because, you know, it's a good thing to kind of wake up even more happy than you already are. So in that sense, tomorrow, um, there's a high likelihood we're going to be looking at the energy life cycle. Uh, if that's the proper term, I'm going to work something out. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing you then. Peace out. Uh, love to all mankind and whatever. <laughs> and I'll hear you tomorrow.